Now for some entertainment. Seriously. You know, you see these programs on TV. <clears throat> They're either history or archaeology, but they're always about the Bible, like a, it's a mystery of the Bible. Do you ever see those programs? Yeah. Yeah. So I watched this program, and man, I was so angry. The program is supposed to be Packaged so nicely, by the way. I mean, just the, the, the post production, the editing, the footage, it's wow, right? But I'm listening, and I am so angry. This is a program on the Lost Tribes. Brace yourself, because you know, if you've been around any amount of time and you've done any reading or research, you've heard all kinds of theories. You've heard all kinds of stuff. But this was so butchered straight from the right off the get go, okay? Um, here's this fellow who is supposedly an expert something, I don't know, from some small Florida university, and I'm not a base singer, but it's some university I've never heard of. And he is, um, he's got this, this theory, and I'm giving you the synopsis as short as I can, but um, it starts off with the fact that he's supposed to be a Bible expert. And he gives lectures in various places, and he was invited to um, South Africa, and he was giving a talk somewhere. He's, a, he's an expert Jewish scholar, but he, I don't think he's a Jew. And so he's giving a lecture, and he says in, in his lecture, <clears throat> it was mostly white men of a certain age who he said were obviously Jews, came to listen to the, to the talk. But he said in the back of the room there were some very black men, and they just, it just didn't fit in. But at the end of his talk, they came up, they introduced themselves, and they claimed to be from, now listen carefully, they claimed to be from a lost tribe. And they begin to give their their story, and he's skeptical, and he goes on a quest to follow through with their claims. And so immediately after he begins to do some research, which is taking some scant um, oral historian of the particular tribe and clan and, and speaking with him and then speaking to some guy who was like a, a resident drunk somewhere, um, they begin to tell the story of, and this is where it gets really bad, because I'm sitting trying to keep my composure while I'm watching this. Homogenized is the carrying away by the Assyrians and the Babylonians, essentially mentioning it as, almost as, as it, it sounded like, although they made a distinction, but you really have to know that it's two separate events that happen years apart. Now, there's a big flaw right there. If you're going to try and study the Lost Tribes, you've got to get it right, right at the beginning, that the first wave of people carried away by the Assyrians, they were moved. They were, we'll call them deported and moved, but they began to migrate. They were not lo landlocked somewhere versus those that were carried away into captivity, into Babylonian captivity. Now, I'm going back to the program now. The program is... Um, they say that after, and they didn't even talk about the prophecy of, of Jeremiah saying the 70 years, but after the captivity, uh, some returned and some didn't. And some returned to rebuild Jerusalem, and the ones that didn't, those are the lost tribes. <laughs> now, <clears throat> for anybody who studied the subject even just a little bit, you've got several problems to look right at the get-go which is we know, 
with probably very good substance and evidence, we know about the number of people carried away in successive waves into Babylon. And we know by the decree, by the Bible, by the decree of Cyrus, and by the books of Nehemiah and Ezra and so forth, we know how many people returned. And the number of people that returned was very few because those that stayed in Babylon, there's a good record, you've got to examine all the facts, the bulk of those people stayed because during a course of 70 years, children were born into that land and they became entrenched in the land and they decided to stay there. Now, could some have migrated? It's plausible, but these that were carried away into Babylon are not to be homogenized with those that were carried away in the Assyrian captivity and that whole group. And this program <clears throat> basically made it one event, made the Babylonian captivity, the remnant that remained in Babylon. Those are the lost tribes. And never once did they even try to attempt to make it clear, assuming that the average listener, assuming the average listener doesn't know what the hell this person is talking about, never even made an attempt to explain, first of all, the lost tribes are not lost, and who are these tribes? Never even mentioned. So it's completely plausible for someone who's uneducated on this subject to now follow along the plot. So here's this guy who now travels to uh, somewhere deep in Africa, and he's now learning that this tribe, <clears throat> they're all black. They wear yarmulkes. They wear prayer robes, they keep the Sabbath, they eat kosher food, they sacrifice in the same way, all of the customs and whatnot. Now there's a fascinating portion to this story that shouldn't all be tossed out. Don't toss out the baby with the bathwater here. And I'll get to that in a minute, which is the DNA testing that they did on these men. But remember, this guy is supposed to be a Bible expert. And this tribe claims that they have the Ark of the Covenant. At least that's the initial claim. And as this guy finally gets a hold of, he gets a description of, of their Ark and realizes, now this is his interpretation, that in the Bible the Ark was carried into war and that they had to rebuild several arcs because the arcs would wear out and I mean like yeah I'm like thinking wow that's that's a I'm sorry I have to say the F word so I'm gonna so that's yeah no 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 wait a minute <laughs> hold on folks carnal folks calm down that's fantasy oh. but you see almost that is fantasy Okay, that's fable. One ark, I mean, I'm sitting there and I'm seething because we know that the construction of the ark, the acacia wood symbolizing the humanity, the, the gold covering, which is the symbol of eternity, the measurements, the cherub with wings folded, we know that God's presence descended on that ark, that yes, the ark went with them into battle, but to suggest that there were several arks and then this Bible scholar says, and there's one place where it says that they had one ark that they took with them, and, and that ark went into battle, but then the other, it's very confusing, okay? So I'm, I'm thinking for the average person watching this, wow, this is fantasy. It's fantastic if you don't know the Bible. It's fantastic. And when they bring out this ark, it's shaped like a drum, it's round, and it's got a piece of stretched leather over it. Now, this guy went so far as to carbon date this thing. And it's carbon dated to 1300 AD. So it does, can't, can't even make a stretch. It's, it's now disappeared. It's, it, they, he found it, now it's disappeared again. But, so somebody stole somebody's drum, okay? <laughs> but. But the problem is that they painted this as these people have the ark, and could this be one of the many arks that was made, and just ridiculous gibberish. 
Not only that, a great omission is left out, that the Ark contained unbroken tablets of the law, Aaron's rod that budded, and the manna. So, you know, it was it like a, you know, shrunken down miniature version inside the drum or something? But I mean, okay, so, excuse me, I just, I was, <sighs> Now, what was fascinating about this is these people, <clears throat> they tell a story that when they left Zion, after they returned from Babylonian captivity, this is their story, and they left Zion, they built a new Zion before they took off on a boat and landed in Africa. Now, the one thing that was discovered that was very fascinating is this same fellow, scholar, whatever he is, sets off, traces that right at the edge of Yemen, he surely finds a place that they built up called Zion, definite town. So it traces back. There's no question, no question that these people migrated from exactly where they said they came from, no question. But these people also say that they came from a priestly line. Now, be clear on where I'm going with this. If we're going to go to the priestly line, we're going to go back to Aaron and his whole, that whole lineage. We're not talking white people, but we're not talking black people either. Let's be clear about that. We're not talking about white people. Aaron was not white. Aaron was not black. Think somewhere in the middle, OK? And that's not being politically correct. That's just a statement of fact. These folks are black. Now, I have no problem with this, because in my mind, there was a, a whole different group of peoples. It's entirely possible that these people were part of a peoples that were somehow carried away or with other peoples. And they left Zion. They returned to Zion. They left Zion. They built up Zion at the edge of Yemen. Then they got on a boat. Seven of them sailed <clears throat> to Africa with the ark and repopulated there. I have no problem with that. But part of this program was they DNA'd they swabbed every man claiming to be a descendant of a priest, of the priestly caste or group. And the logic was that the X uh, in the man, would you could trace that all the way back. You cannot necessarily trace the mother's side, but you could at least trace the X chromosome all the way back. And so they would be able to trace this and match up whether or not the DNA matched the DNA of the Kohen, or what he kept referring to as Kohen, which is the English version of Kohen priest. And so they do a DNA. This is the breakdown of the, this is the fault of this. Because in order to um, verify this information, you would have to certifiably have somebody on this side, who can trace their lineage back. And when I say this side, I'm talking about someone who has lineage, who says, I'm from a priestly line, grandpa, great grandpa, great, 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 and go all the way back and be able to keep that line pure on this side and do, take the DNA to have something to compare it to. So this was the missing ingredient in what this program presented. They said they tested these men by DNA, and they matched up the DNA to the priestly line. Well, they never said where, what DNA they were comparing it to. They just said it matched up. So I don't know. That's another one of these, like, whoosh. It's, a, you know, it's another one of those F words. <laughs> Fine. OK? Uh, I have no problem in a group of people who are keeping the law, who are practicing, and, and it's very strange because, yes, they have all these customs and they circumcise and all of that. I have no problem with their migration story. I have no problem with their idea 
that they're carrying the ark, except for the fact that these are people of the book, and you would think that they would be reading in their own book to know that the measurements and dimensions of the ark given in Exodus and repeated at least once or twice over do not match a round drum, don't even have the parallels. And so the whole premise of this program, these people are called the lemma. Could the lemma be, you know, the, one of the lost tribes? Now here's, here's where being a wordsmith can drive people insane. Are these people a lost tribe? Yes. They're, they are a lost tribe from somewhere, there's no doubt. But are they part of the lost tribes that are not lost? Well, that's a question that you'd have to trace back to be able to identify whether or not in big picture, the one thing they left out was spelling out if the tribes of, of the whole sons we're talking about, I'm using 13, not 12, but 13, including the half uh, son, sons of uh, Joseph, you would have to deduce that they would have to come from one of these, and we're only talking about the priestly line of the group of the tribe of Levi, so you'd have to be able to clearly ascertain that these people came from that tribe, and there's a huge glaring problem with that. And hear me out, this is not a racist comment, it's just a huge glaring problem. The priests were to keep themselves, remember I said they were neither white nor black, okay? We're talking about people that are the color of the earth or sand, all right? To just kind of give you an idea, this is not racist, but the priests were not to defile themselves with foreign women. So the two ingredients missing in this research are A, tracing where, where these people came from, and I told you an unbalanced, where, what, what DNA are you comparing it to? But the other thing is, if you're going to follow this logic, it means somewhere the priesthood ceased to be the priesthood as they're claiming it is, because they had strict laws about the wives they could take. Now you, you know, do whatever you want with that. But to the average person out there who doesn't have information about the priesthood and the laws that are very stringent on who they can marry, God was, was not, through the Old Testament, at least through the Pentateuch, we read over and over again about God saying, don't mix, don't intermarriage, don't mingle, repeated over and over again, but the laws were incredibly stringent for the priests. And they weren't celibate, they had wives. But the laws were very, very, very clear on exactly who they could marry. This is left out. The dimensions in explaining the Ark of the Covenant is left out. Naming the tribes of Israel left out. Everything, I mean, anything that you could just leave as ambiguous so that th the average viewer might look at this and go, wow, wow, that's wow. I told you, there's only one word for this, and it has, it, so there's a, it starts with an F. <laughs> Fantasy. It's still family time here, so that's what I said. So I told you, be really careful about what you watch on TV. But my concern is for those people who have none of this foundation, and they gobble this stuff up, and this becomes the facts of their mind. It's very disturbing. Now, we'll come to Easter. There'll be a new discovery from one of these mystery programs. You know, we found the offspring of Jesus. He had a child, <laughs> multiple wives, whatever. You know. And for the average person who just doesn't have Bible knowledge, it's tenable, it's plausible. So it seems like I've tried to get away from this subject because I really don't want to get into it. That's its, it's, 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 it's whole universe. Lost Tribe Teaching, it, it, it helps to understand the book. It helps and gives us clarity for the end of days. But I really think this kind of stuck in my mind that maybe I need to put down some current teaching and make it so that if there's going to be stuff circulating out there, there's something to counterbalance the insanity and the fantasy 
<laughs> yes, that's what I said. There are many words to choose from. Thou hast chosen the better one. Yes. Um, to be able to make sure that there's information being put out there that at least for people who are searching and seeking, they can take the building blocks. And that was one of the things I learned from this program, which I'm guilty of many times. I operate on the presupposition that the, all of the people listening to me have some foundational premise starting point. But this program really taught me one thing, especially on subjects like that, one cannot assume anything because the assumption leads to complete, it's, it opens up these dimensions of what people might assume or have no frame of reference or knowledge about. So it's completely plausible for someone who doesn't even know the, the, the sons of Jacob slash Israel becoming the house of Israel and the house of Judah. And when we analyze these um, as a not lost, but to find a tribe somewhere, as I said, it's plausible. Wordsmith operations go on in my brain. It's plausible to say these people are a lost tribe of somewhere. And I'm not discounting the fact that somewhere back there in the wood pile, there was you know, somebody, you know, decided to go into one pile or another and that, you know, but the, the thing is that these folks are not even a, they're not even a shade towards the middle. They were very dark people. And I'm not saying that it's impossible. I'm simply saying that in the big picture, one has to look at all of the information and then make some uh, decisions based on that. Now, is it possible, based on their story, that they came from where they came from? Absolutely. Is it possible they were part of a group or a band of people that were carried away or that happened to be in the land? It's all plausible. It's all possible. But the arguments on which this whole thing were based were terrible. You know, if you're going to do present information, you've got to put it out there with all of the pieces Unless your goal, by the way, is to manipulate the minds of people and lure them away from any other pursuit of truth by giving them something that sounds so on the surface, so plausible, that you would be willing to accept something, just like Jesus and Mary were lovers and they had a child, or I mean, you know, you can go down the chronicle of things that are spawned out of the Jesus ossuary, I mean, a thousand different, you know, Jesus wasn't buried, his bones were put in an ossuary because that was the custom, and on and on and on it goes. So, um, just telling you, if you watch those programs, watch with caution, although I don't think I really have to tell you, but I'm talking to another audience of people maybe who are just getting interested in the subject, do your homework, for goodness sake. Don't just take stuff in and go, wow, that's, you know, because this guy's a scholar, from a university, by the way, I've never heard of, but, but that's okay. But if you're a scholar, you're going to put the information out there in such a way that it might even be too much information. And hey, don't talk to me about it's only a 30-minute program and you can't fit it in. Then make it a two-parter. <laughs> you know, you make a way to put the information out there so people have the details. I've just, yeah, the sound by generation has taken over and lost their mind. So uh, anyway, I just told you I would entertain you, and I think I did just a little bit. Uh, and, and now you kind of know a little bit of why I said to you, that's its, it's, its own subject. You know, um, people ask the question, why we should study this? It's very plain. You're going to encounter these tribes who are not lost, because if they were, they wouldn't be named. You encounter them in the book of Revelation. The 144,000 are, are named, not all the tribes, but Dan is missing. Um, but in Ezekiel, the portion of the allotment of the land, these tribes are named. It's like God is saying, hey, listen, I called these people. They were just as the Bible says, Jezreel, scattered, scattered, and I will gather them again. 
in the last day. That's God's word of promise, the two sticks being put together as one, the people being brought back to worship. There's all kinds of stuff that you need those pieces of information to adequately understand. God is not done with those people and they are not lost. And if people are interested in the information, believe me, there's an abundance of it. Beginning with what happens in the Bible, I've you know, taken the highlights from small passages that seem quite irrelevant, not just the passages we're familiar with, but in Deborah's time, the song of Deborah, Deborah's talking about Dan dwelling in, in ships. Listen, you don't get into ships and dwell in them if you are land people that are landlocked. And that, that strange, there's, there's two things said right there in the book of Judges, in Deborah's song, uh, that are very informative. They give you an idea that these people were already on the move. There were already migrations of people moving. And, you know, some, some person will ask, what does this have to do with current events? And it has everything to do if a person is not willing to understand our ties to Israel, which are extremely important, which obviously some people do not understand, which go way back. I, in fact, I just mentioned a part of this in my message this morning. Abram, not Jew, not Muslim, not Christian, but he said, to thy seed, Isaac, and descending from Isaac is Jacob, and Jacob births and brings forth. Everything is related. If you're not interested in taking the time to learn about these things, don't try and understand what's going on in the world today because it will not make sense to you whatsoever. You need this book. This is the handbook to understand what's going on today and ultimately what will happen in the end of days. Okay, then. I think I'm going to go back to another F word. <laughs> This will be the F festival. <laughs> it's called fine. It's just fine with me if you don't want to learn. But I think there's a whole bunch of you out there that want to learn, and that is fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> Get on the telephone. <laughs> Lift up holy hands, our hearts in one accord. Worship.